I got the girls running. She is, best cow on the farm. It was all going so well, until. I am so blimmin' useless at finishing videos. Heepers! Here come the girls. Welcome back to a new video. As you can probably hear, I have some form of head cold. The uh, stag do has not been kind to me. But we're back at work. We got some heifers here that we want to uh, fat scan today. So Jonathan's coming to do that. Um, we did it a couple years ago on a video. I don't think I did it last time he came, but we're, we're gonna do it again. John's coming down here in the truck. We're gonna try and get these guys. We need to get them over to Rowden at our buildings, but they need to head this way first, but the gate is in the wrong corner, so it might be interesting. And then next one, we've got the techno animals. They've all come to see what's up. Certainly it's not really in the corner of anywhere, is it? The gate isn't, yeah, the gate is in the wrong place for everywhere. Hello. Um, if, if I can let them out gently rather than them all rushing, it might be... Might be preferable. Do this super well tied knot. Right, cows, slow and steady. What we don't want is a load of them going down the inside of the fence. That's good if they think they're coming this way. That's fine. Once everyone's out, I will shut the gate. Come on in. Come on. Right. Good work. This is some of the ground that we reseeded last year on the channel, me, John and Dr. Phil. There's a bit there that hasn't taken, but there's no soil there, it's just but there is some, but it's just clay. So it's the 26th of April today, I think. Is it the 27th? No, it's the 26th. So uh, Monday next week, today's a Wednesday, Monday next week the balls will go out. It'll be the beginning of May. How are you doing? Better than you. Yeah, yeah, I feel rough. Yeah, I don't feel very well. A career in drinking isn't in your future, is it? No, I think I've done enough drinking for... Your to, lifetime? My lifetime. Yeah. It was all going so well, until... Oh, what are you lot doing then? Come on. Oh, no. Just doing a quick shed inspection whilst we're going past. Oh. The neighbour's ball has come to see what's going on. Belt of Galloway trap there. Hold oh, no. So if you haven't seen any of it before, this um, eye muscle scanning that we're doing, uh, it's basically just a ultrasound machine, like you would get for doing... Oh, I haven't shut my door on the shop. I didn't shut my door, did I? Did you hear me shut Yes. It? Just like a pregnancy scanner. Yeah. I don't... It uses a lot of oil. Loads of oil. Loads of oil. Lube right now. Lathers them up for the eyeballs. I'm gonna shut this gate behind us. I think he shaves the areas where he wants to scan. Puts a load of oil on. Come on, stick. Um, and then basically just takes a load of ultrasound pictures with which with a trained eye you can see all the marbling effect of the meat and everything. Here's Dr. Phil. Is that going right then, obviously? Yep. I see you're sporting your favourite fashion choice. Oh yeah. What? Oh yeah, I know. I don't one know why out. they started doing that again. <laughs> All the kids do it nowadays. <laughs> I know, I know. It's just started doing it again. <laughs> Man, isn't it? Must be the weather. Yeah, exactly. She is best cow on the farm. Just look at the fat depth there. That that white bar. Yeah. Frozen. 
Yeah, between, between the top, the, the top bar's skin, and then between that is your fat layer. Right. And underneath you got your muscle, and this this dark bone there, that's your your hip bone come up in black. Right. And I suppose the, all the white bits amongst the black are your intramuscular fat. Yeah. Right on. So does it, I don't know. Looking at that means absolutely nothing to me. Is that what? Fairly average for the average count. Jonathan, say, is that that looks all right? Yeah. If I manually measure it, it'll be something like between there and there. Seven mil. So yeah, it's okay. It's okay. When you really get towards being a fat bullet, you know, you could have up to you know, up to an inch on there, sort of thing. Right. You probably don't want an inch. You probably want yeah. It's a nice cover in your steak. Yeah. It depends who's yeah. buying the steak. That's it. it. Yeah. yeah. Of effort, that's pretty. Well done, Gail. This is the intramuscular. Oh, you're along the top still, I see. Fat, so yeah, we're looking. So this is yeah, rib, rib, and rib. Yeah. Um, you can still see the fat layer here, which we measured at the top. But this here, this, where we're looking at just the speckling in the muscle, which is your intramuscular fat in your, these are your ribeye steaks here. Take six images. What do they do then, John? Do they take like yeah. an average from them? Do they? Yeah, the lab, the lab, lab processes them and uh, it knocks out any the best and worst one and just the rest. Right. I don't know where it will show up on the camera it's all flickering. And we look at the actual. Probably a lockdown haircut. Yeah, that is, yeah. So is it a specific rib? Yeah, so we're going between the yeah, 12th and the 13th rib, so the 13th is your last one. Right. So we're just going right there, and that bit is your, that's your rib eye steak. Rib eye steak. There it is. This will get measured in the lab. Do that, probably just going to trace it around. Something like that, and it gives us an area. I haven't quite drawn it right because my hands been <laughs> covered in oil, but uh, yeah, yeah. It's fine. Nice one. Well done, Gail. Big three of those. She's not let us down. Release the cows. Right, I'm here on my own now, so hopefully I can coerce them out the gate in the corner. Right, cows are on their way back to the field. So, I don't know how well it would come out on camera showing you Jonathan's screen of what he was looking for. But basically, you're scanning three different areas of the cows. Um, so on the back end you're scanning, you can see how thick a layer of fat they've got underneath their skin. So obviously that is a bit of fat that sits on your rump steak. Um, and then we've got along the top side of the ribs and then down the rib eye steaks as well. Um, and on all of them you can see how much fat they have on the bottom of their skin, but then also uh, how much intramuscular sort of fat and marbling there is. Um, and the idea behind it is they get scored upon their scan results. And I think within the stabilizer society, you need at least six animals per breeding bull um, when you score them to make the um, scores count towards their EBVs. I think that's right. Um, but basically you can start making a picture of sires that might be better for marbling or that produce cows with better marbling, more fat or less fat or, or whatever. But um, yeah, that's, it's, it's rather interesting. We do it once a year, just on our breeding females. Uh, they got to be between 300 and 500 days old um, to scan. Uh, you can scan bulls if you have bulls that age, but we don't, so we don't. I don't know if you can see, but John's actually in the truck up ahead. I didn't realise he'd come back, so now he's got a reverse all the way behind them. My bad. So yeah, that's what we were doing then. Uh, we actually went off to a stabiliser meeting yesterday down um, in Weybridge. I looked around another stabiliser farm. It makes our cows look massive. Uh, the stabiliser breed, they have smaller cows as a breed. Um, Smaller cows, easier carving, but quite vigorous growth. And our base cow that we seem to start from when the uh, Institute took on stabilizers here seems to be 
a lot bigger than uh, some of the other farms that we've looked around. So I think we are definitely breeding smaller cows going forward. Um, whether that's a good thing, I don't know. Just spied the neighbor cutting silage up on the hill. I don't know if I'll be able to zoom in enough or not. Forager, rake, trailer, all next to each other there. Having a go? It almost seems like it's late because it's a late year, but it's still only the you know, end of April. This is one of our silage fields here this year. We've had a big swap around. So ground that we'd normally graze with cows and calves at home here, we're actually gonna silage and we've taken all the stock away. So this field is called rushes. You can see there's some rushes in it. We're gonna cut that one. Just think it's good to have some rotation sometime. Um, it keeps the silaging a lot closer to home. So hopefully it'll be a bit of a quicker operation. Um, and yeah, it gives a chance to get some cows onto some ground that hasn't had cows on for a while. Puts a bit of uh, organic matter back into the ground. I got the girls running. They're a really, really even bunch of cattle looking from the back here. There are six steers mixed in with them. You just about picked them out, they're a little bit bigger, but majority of them, even. We are down by the crush. Take some more cows and calves out, so we've got them separated here. We need to fix the box quick, because that one's got a puncher. We need to swap the wheel. This one needs spot on on the cow and the calf. And then they're ready, and then we'll load up and set sail. Right, we're off, we've got the box on, 10 cows in the back. The grice has actually gone on ahead with the uh, stock box with the calves. We'll go and catch him up and let them out. There won't be too many left to go out then. I think it'll be maybe three more loads. John will get those done either tomorrow or the day after. See, there's just a few left in the shed there. Yeah, there's the grice. We'll catch them up and we'll get up there. And let these guys eat. Phil's just back in his box into position. We got mine there with the cows. We'll let them all out into the middle here and we'll run into there. Stand here whilst the calves come out. Yeah. Oh, calves. Oh. 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 This box is disgusting. Pull that one. in the box. You got a spare one? <laughs> yeah. There's speckles. That's the mother of the white calf we scanned earlier. So this is a field that we grew last year. Um, we had barley in here. It looks like we've sown it with thistles. But uh, we grassed it out. We grassed it out in some pretty horrific conditions. It was wet and horrible and sticky. And you see a lot of what here of it is just volunteer barley. Um, there's a bit of grass mixed in. But the cows will come and chew it down and eat it over and whatever it is it is. It's not the uh, best quality grazing. I'm just gonna make sure the gate is shut into the field of barley next door because that will be a disaster if they get in there. Decided to grass this one out just because uh, well, it wasn't really worth growing to our boards. Such a small field. Um, it ties in quite nice with the grazing around here as well anyway. Gate is shut, which is it, it's also tied. So that's good. Shouldn't have no accidents there. I wish the field of grass looked like this. Yeah, oh, but it doesn't. Looks like this. But it is what it is. Cows will come up here and eat the best of it. It'll uh, pull itself together at some point, I'm sure. Anyway, I'll walk back down, see what the cows are doing, and then head on back. Hello, 1844. You're a big cow. Oh, fresh grass. <coughs> there we talk, sir. Oh, 
right, let's get away from this noisy dual carriageway. <laughs> House on the move. Right, we're now back. It's actually a couple of days later because I am so blimmin' useless at finishing videos. I completely forgot the other day. So uh, we've just taken another load of cows out today. We've got two more loads to go. It's now the bank holiday weekend. Uh, I've got really bad man flu, as you might be able to hear. Uh, and then when we come back, me and John are working the weekend in the bank holiday. And then Tuesday, hopefully all the cows will be out by then and we're gonna let the bulls out. So uh, that's what you'll be seeing on the next video. We've also got a demo tractor coming next week, so there'll be a bit of that as well. So uh, yeah, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you on the next one. Cheerio.